We out here in the garage today. Doing a little refresh on this here Foreman 450. We got Bailey out here, shop technician, getting the oil drained out. Gonna do a top end on it, carburetor clean, full service. Yeah, I'll see y'all next clip. We got the uh, clutch cover off. Time and chain tensioner is not doing shit. Don't know how it even ran, to be completely honest with y'all. All right, so y'all can kind of see. Only kind of tries to lock up, but don't. One way bearing is bad, so you pop this out. Put a little bearing right up in there at me. Lay us to the side. So you take your little bearing out. Bad boy right here. You can kind of see this. Might be able to see it. But those are kind of flat. It's four flat spots in them. Bearing's junk. So you take your new one. Make sure you got your outside. Just says outside. Put her back together. Or check it to be sure it's going the right way. Yep locks up lube it up with some wet clutch oil and put it all together Alrighty, take 5,000 here. So once you get your valve seated, you get your nice shiny dual gray line there. Then that's when it's time to put the seals in there. Two little bitty green looking ones there. Some of them, some of them go on really easy and I've had some of them that just would not want to go on there. So you gonna have to, alrighty, once you got some wool up on there, yeah, that's all there is. Kind of keep it straight when you push it. I have like everything on the table here, so y'all just don't mind that. I'm to put a little bit more wool on this side. Oh, I got her. So, get y'all a little close up on it here. So you want to make sure your spring kind of stays on the bottom there. You want to make sure it's kind of flush on it. Yeah. So on your springs here, they'll be tightly wound. You can kind of see right there at the bottom, they're wound just a little bit tighter. So that faces down. In the same way, same way with your little springs, they're tightly wound it down there, it goes down. I don't really think it matters that much, but if you read the book, or service manual, 
you'll see the you'll see what I'm talking about there. They specifically say that. And you grab your your valve spring compressor. I'm try try to zoom in here and give y'all a good look at that. So kind of see right there at the end of that valve where I got the spring compressed. There's the two little keepers here. And they kind of got a taper on them. I'm just kind of wiping these off. They're a little bit dirty. All right. And then there's a, always kind of... This is where the little fingers come in handy. Got the bottom one kind of started. It takes a little bit of practice with this. It might take y'all a couple tries. I'll probably end up making it look easy. Uh, you definitely kind of watch your area because they, they'll fall. And if they fall, they can be hard to find. They can be very hard to find. All right, we got bottom one kind of fell out on me. I know the lighting ain't all that good for y'all. Bear with me. This one's wanting to be a tricky. All right. I'm gonna back it out, kind of hold it in place right there. Perfecto. And that's right on what you want right there. And then the book also says to tap it with a hammer to be sure it's seated. Kind of weird, don't really know why it says that. But right there, you can kind of see it. You want like an even gap and then Right here on this valve, you can see the, the lip. So you got your new piston pin, piston, and check it. Be sure the machine shop didn't get it dirty. Yeah, a lot of people hate on the more pistons, but I've been using them in literally everything the last six years, and I've never seen one bust, crack, or fail, really. I've had a, I've seen the rings wear out after like two or three years of hard riding, but I mean he also was his air filter he had a leak in his intake boot, so it's kind of no wonder can't really blame the, the piston for sucking in dust. So I've had pretty good luck out of them. So what you want to do here? Always got our rings out of the box. All right, just wanted to be sure it's the, the right piston, and it is. Got a bunch of oil on it now, but that's a good thing. So grab your piston clip. I mean, I don't know why I call it clip. Piston pin. Grab your lube of choice. Kind of oil up your, your hole there where the pin goes. Everything needs to be pretty, pretty decently oiled. All right, so then... You got that, throw a little bit of oil on your pen. Kind of baptize everything in Rotella 1540. All right, grab your pen, slide it in. This is just a trick that I like to do, personally. Sometimes it can be a little, a little tough. It's a little bit cold out here too. All right, let's try to get her down just a little bit more. Too far. Too far again. All right, we got her there. I just had to work some of that oil in, now she's free. All right, once you get that far, trust me, I know the ratchet's a nice tool for that, but hey, it's a, most important thing is be careful. Make sure you don't gouge the piston or do something crazy. Been there, done that. I think everybody that's doing it has ran into it at one point. Grab my razor blade. I just had it earlier. We'll use the scissors. All right, so there's your two piston clips. You wanna look at your piston have exhaust on one side. So the exhaust is gonna to point to the front of the motor. So we're gonna put the 
go ahead and pre-install the clip right here. The uh, reason why I like to put the pin in is if it slips, it don't scratch where your screwdriver or whatever don't scratch right there where the pin rides. It's kind of like just protective measure. And this is a, another tricky part. Trying to like show y'all on the camera. I might need to get my little, let me get my little screwdriver real quick. Grab my little screwdriver. Try to get one that's pretty clean. Something like this, very important, very important that you keep everything very clean. You wanna make sure everything's nice and clean. You don't want no dirt getting between your brand new rings. I always wipe my, hand, my hands off before I really get too far into it. All right, I heard that click. She's right there in that groove. And that's exactly what you want. And now double check, that's intake side. So the front of the piston is gonna be that way. So that gives us room to that pin. All right, that's all we're gonna do on the pin. Install our rings. Pretty straightforward. Got your spacer ring. Always point that towards the intake. That's how you got your very, very end there towards the intake side. Grab your two little oil rings. Getting kind of chilly out here. Getting a little bit chilly. And then about, I say an inch and a half. Yeah, do about an inch and a half away from that, from that side there. Then do the other one just an inch and a half the other side. And again, I kind of make it look easy. The oil, these rings here are not directional. They're just scraper rings. All right. Then your last two rings are directional. A lot of people mess up here. All right, so this side right here, this one, it literally says second ring right there. Let's see if we can zoom in and show it. It ain't gonna focus. Maybe it will. All right, zoom back out. So it ain't gonna focus, but it says top, second ring. And then the words face up. I always face the words up. The black ring, the dual looking black ring is normally the second ring. And then for that top ring there, just for, just to kind of check things out. I normally always do this to see just how accurate my machine guy is. Cylinder's already lubed up and just kind of push the ring down in there. All right, check our ring gap. Our ring gap is all right. Just something I want to check. If they're too tight for whatever reason, it didn't board out right, you'll know it. You'll know it because it'll lock slap up. Or if it's too big, it'll start smoking. All right, so we got rings oriented. I don't have a, a service manual for y'all to show y'all. Words up, top ring, shiny ring. Flip this around. We'll put a little bit of oil on the the rings and whatnot, the skirt. Now kind of lube that up, kind of lube that up. A little bit of oil on everything. I'm not trying to take a bath in oil, but something to stop the piston from dry starting. All right, we know when all our ring gaps are right. If you want to look at your cylinder, exhaust is going to be 
that way. So it'll go in like this. Just make sure you know for a fact which way is intake exhaust. Because if not, you'll be taking it all back off. and That's also not fun. This can be a little tricky. Let me get a, let me get my a chair over here real quick. Some people, some people are gonna tell you, oh shit. Some people are gonna tell you that I'm too low. They're gonna tell you that you need to put it in the cylinder first. Blah blah blah. I mean, you can do it. You can go this far with it in the frame. You can do this part in the frame, but I mean, you see how easy I just slid that on there? Watch your watch your oil ring, because sometimes the oil ring will, will kind of catch. This one's my luck. This always happens. There's been a few times where it don't. You want to watch your end gap. You don't want to push too hard. There we go. We see our, our end of the ring there. Let me get my pick tool. Clean the end of it off. And then right there on the end. I'll show you all that real quick. I see it. I'll point at it real quick. Right, well, right there. It's kind of slightly grabbing. So you just got to be careful. You know, take your time. Definitely take your time on this. It's barely. They normally grab a little tighter than that. So there we go. Perfect though. We just had to rock it, kind of. That way and this way. Perfecto. Got her started in there. Just make sure when you pull her out, you don't go too far. I always like to rock it. All right, and then we're going to pop that pin back just a little bit. Actually, hold on, pick, hitting it the wrong way. And it, definitely, oh, it's helicopters flying by. She definitely ain't going to poke out the side that's got the clip on it. We're just using the, the end of the plastic pick. Plastic ain't gonna do much. All right, there's that. That part's done. We're gonna cut back to camera when we get the timing set. We're gonna get the timing set now. Right there on the crank, I can't really show you all that. You get your crank all the way up. We're, we're kind of tight on room here too. There's a mark on this cam. It's gonna go straight up. Kind of get it fished around and started on there. Hold on. Thinking that's it right there. I can't hardly see with the plastic in the way. I really can't see shit.
And I've got it. All right, so we're gonna get our tensioner prepped up. Um, so I don't like the cheap tensioners off eBay. Like the ten dollar ones are fucking junk, but they give you a little tool if you do get one. So it's really worth buying one just for the little tool. So you run that in there. And then you kind of push it in and that, that'll lock it right there. So now you can go ahead and put it in. Alrighty. Got the cylinder on there. Make sure you put a little bit of a dab bit of Honda Bond on the underside of that gasket there. Make sure you got both your dowel pins in. Put another dowel pin there and drop this cylinder head on there. Torque that down. We double checked our timing. Our timing is good. Chain's tight. Alright, so you take your, your cleaned rocker covers here. You lay it. Once you kind of get it spun around, like I was saying, you you watch your intake valve, and as soon as the intake valve goes down, you look for that piston to come up as soon as it gets to the top. It ain't got to be right perfect. Got to hook pretty close and drop that on there. You should have just a little bit of play in your valves. Yeah. That's all you're looking for. That way when you torque these down, the valves don't interfere with the, the torque on it. Put some oil on all the... on some lube on all the threads, put the washers on, torque it to 29 foot-pounds. We'll catch you on the next clip. Torque wrench get kind of old, so a little, a little over won't hurt it. Yep, and that's torqued down. We got the case cleaned out real good, all the gaskets scraped. Ready to, ready to put back. All right, we're fixing to take the carb off this bad boy and get it clean. I mean, it's, it's crusty. It really is. It's bad. It's really bad. So we're gonna take everything off of it. We're just gonna gut it. Throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Rip this right here off. Sometimes people strip them. I actually stripped the threads out on them. That one's good. All right. Next thing, probably pop off through the primer. Pop, pop the primer off of it. There's not a whole lot to these carburetors. are pretty basic. So people don't know how to properly clean them. Yeah, that's white powdery dust up in there oh yeah that's what you want right there that's crazy i wasn't expecting that this thing's set for a long time which it's set for about seven months i bought it i bought it and i let it set for a while because i had other stuff going on my other 1000 other rebuilds razors and whatnot yeah the trick here is just have you a real good screwdriver and hope nobody else has stripped them out before you. These came off. That was pretty tight, but none of them stripped. I don't really know like what the actual screw size is supposed to be. Now I got like one head, like a Phillips one, a Phillips two. I don't know which one it is, but try it and be sure you get a real tight fit one. Oh God. Holy shit, that's awful. That's god awful. I wasn't expecting that. Man, this kind of took a turn. Ew. Looks like something died in there. Holy crap. I don't really know what happened there. You glad it's at the bottom of the carb and it's not all the way through everything. Yeah. Smells like gas. It's like bad gas. Take all your jets and whatnot out. Yeah, this carburetor's gonna be all right. Let me grab my other flathead. All righty, so we back here on the carburetor. We got everything nice and clean now. I mean, it literally corroded. It was so bad, but there's no more dirt and like that in there. She's nice and clean now. Can't beat it. It's time to slap her together. So I got my little bag of different size main jets. I'm gonna pick out the 140. And there it is. Carburetor rebuilt. Ready to go.
Alrighty, well, here's the outcome right here. New timing chain, piston, fresh overboard. The dash is a little bit. Well, the sun's kind of glaring it. You can see it, but it's a little bit, you know, faded, but not too bad. No knocks or smoke or nothing like that. Gotta be pretty easy on her 